For NYUp and Syracuse.com, I am Matt Perino, and I am joined today by Chris Mason from MassLive.com. He is on the New England Patriots beat uh, covering them. Chris, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? And uh, you're pretty new to the beat out there. You kind of took over midseason. I did, yeah. It started in early November. Um, it's been a whirlwind, whirlwind around here. I mean, there's, uh, there's just always something going on in Fox, bro. Um, but, yeah, no, it's been great. And happy to get started. Yeah, you're doing a great job, and, uh, you know, we have uh, two teams this year uh, in the thick of things in the AFC East, nothing new for the Patriots, but very new for, Buffalo, for the Buffalo Bills and their fan base. Uh, I think it's been more than 20 years since the Bills won the AFC East, so to even be in uh, the conversation at this point in the season is, is something the fans aren't used to. I guess I want to start with Tom Brady, though, because I think that that that's where things start and end with the Patriots uh, most years. Uh, obviously, this year, a very excellent defense that we'll touch on in a bit. But I think that for fans watching from afar and even those that are monitoring it closely, it seems like the demise of Tom Brady has been, you know, prophesied for years and years and years. Yeah. And now it finally seems maybe more real than ever. Is that a bit of an overreaction or is there, do you think, legitimate concern in there within the team and on the beat about this maybe finally being the end of the road here for Tom? I think there is a bit of an overreaction element with that. Um, he is playing with an elbow injury right now, and I think that is hindering some of his uh, production. But I think a lot of it falls on the wide receivers too. I mean, he lost Rob Gronkowski, and they just did not replace him. His leading receiver is Julian Edelman, who's banged up, 33 years old. And then you start going down the list, and it's like they got Muhammad Sanu. He popped for a game, but he's been dealing with an ankle injury. You have a couple of rookies who are – he's still not on – the same page with all the time um do I think he's playing his 2007 MVP level no certainly not there's some throws that he made in the past that he hasn't made this year but I don't think you know the Max Kellerman he's fallen off a cliff I, I don't think that's happened yet I think it's really more of a product of the offense than and uh and elbow injury too than just you know suddenly losing it mm -hmm. so when they when the teams met the first time around, uh, the Bills held Tom Brady to under 50% completion percentage. That hasn't happened a whole lot uh, over his time. Very dominant record uh, against the Bills, 30-plus wins now in his career. And actually, going on the road this weekend, if the Bills were somehow able to pull off this win, it would be amazingly be the first time in Bills history that they beat Tom Brady in Foxborough where he started the game and finished the game. So as good as things have been going for Buffalo, this is still kind of a, a tall task. But, you know, you go back to the first game, uh, and, and obviously you've probably been talking to the, you know, the Patriots players this week about what happened in that first game. Where, where did Tom and company kind of feel like the Bills defense did a good job at, you know, kind of clamping down on them and, and holding them to a pretty pedestrian game? Um, well, it's like you said right off the bat, the completion percentage wasn't there, you know, like – I think they played very well in the secondary. And then, I mean, they really played well everywhere in that game, right? Like, it was 16-10 final. They had – Patriots had that block punt. I think, you know, in that game you look at Buffalo and it's like they played pretty well defensively across the board. Um, yeah, but the secondary in particular, I think, anytime you can hold Brady to under 50% and any time that, like – you know, you see the visible frustration in that game, too. Like, I think that's an area where they certainly played well. You mentioned the playmakers that have kind of, uh, you know, been lost for Tom Brady. I mean, Gronkowski, I thought, was going to be a huge hit. But, you know, the blocking, uh, you know, in the run game is an area that, you know, I think not enough people are talking about. You know, to lose Andrews at the beginning of the season, uh, your, yep. your, your center, and then lose James, uh, James Devlin, who – for all intents and purposes was Sony Michelle's like leading horse there, you know, last yep. year and, and what was able to, so have they been able to figure things out at all as the season's gone along? And can there be an expectation that maybe the bills will face a, a tougher running game with Sony Michelle and company this week? So they finally got it going against Cincinnati, but I think there's an element of fool's goal to that because Cincinnati is atrocious against the run, like by far the worst team in the league. They have gotten, a bit better since Isaiah Wynn came back. He was their first rounder last year. He was IR'd with, I think it was an ankle, and uh, missed the first two months of the season. And so he's back at left tackle, and they've been running better to the left lately. But I think they certainly missed Devlin still. Like, that was a huge blow. And, um, you know, they haven't really been able to establish it in a lot of games this year. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, moving to the offensive side of the ball for the Bills is where I think a lot of eyes are going to go, especially nationally. Uh, Josh Allen, who has passed a few tests this year, uh, failed a few tests this year, and I think one of the big ones was against this New England Patriots defense in week four where he threw three interceptions, uh, had the fumble uh, before going out with a concussion. And, you know, there's been a lot of growth, obviously, it, not only for Josh Allen, but an offense that had nine new starters uh, going into the season. They're at a completely different place and I think have a, a better grasp at their, uh, of what their identity is as an offense. But they're still going to go up against a pretty elite level defense, uh, especially secondary with Stephon Gilmore. Uh, yep. who, uh, you know, Bills fans are very familiar with. But I wanted to ask you, what's the perception of Allen uh, in that locker room? Like I, and I know, you know, there's a narrative out there on him as a, as a player, and it goes back to the draft process and everything that, you know, came with that. But from a player's perspective, when you talk to players in the locker room, what do they think of Josh Allen and the task of, of going up against him this weekend? It's tough reading Patriots players because they're always going to focus on the positive with the opponent, praise the opponent, like whatever, like they, it's always going to be positive. Um, so it's, it's tough to gauge the perception, but I do think, you know, they're, they were, I, I think they respect him. I re think they respect his ability to, um, extend plays and I think they do see the growth there I mean you could just even you check the box score and you see growth but I think on the tape they've recognized that too so I do think there's a respect for him in the Patriots locker room yeah I think Bill Belichick does a really good job of this every week in in highlighting all of the yeah. the, the pros uh as opposed to the cons for any player uh that he's asked about um but you know from my perspective on the beat I, I think that there's areas that you know Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott would tell you they're still hoping improves as Josh Allen yeah. moves forward. But I think the biggest area uh, that, that it has improved that, you know, puts them in a place to compete in a game like this is Josh Allen's ability to take care of the football a little bit better than he did early on. Um, it's kind of uh, brought the offense as a whole in terms of its production to a screeching halt against some of the good defenses that they faced. Uh, you look at what they did in Pittsburgh last year, they didn't even, or last week, didn't even get to 250 yards of total offense. Uh, but a lot of that was because of the um, measured approach to, you know, mitigating Josh Allen's game a little bit. Because yeah. when he is kind of allowed to go out there and, and, and freewheel it a little bit and, and freelance and make plays, he tends to, to make some mistakes. And against that New England secondary, I mean, you could talk about this. That's an area where you get yourself into a lot of trouble as an offense. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And one matchup I think to highlight on this side of the ball is going to be um, Cole Beasley against – I'm curious to see what the Patriots are going to do against him because uh, John Jones missed practice again today. Jonathan Jones, second one he's missed, and he's their best slot guy. He hasn't missed a game yet this year. He got hurt last week in Cincinnati. So I think they're going to be on plan B and then maybe even plan C there um, because Jason McCourty's missed three of the last four games with a groin injury too. So the Patriots secondary, as good as it is, is going to have to uh, kind of adapt on the fly this week. Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, point that you bring up and, and something that I'm sure Sean McDermott uh, will try to exploit Brian Dable. And that's something that the Bills talked about even today in the locker room is that, you know, they're expecting a wrinkle out of the Patriots every time they play them. And I think that this is a group that's um, pretty adjusted to who it is um, to be able to make some of those uh, adjustments. And um, they played really well, I thought, last year in New England. I, I thought this they'd have a lot more success at home early on in the season. That was a big game. The Bills were 3-0 going into it. Uh, it didn't actually end up happening. Uh, but I think one of the big keys of the game, and, and, and if you have any more, you can give them after, I think, is Devin Singletary. Uh, he didn't play in that first game. Uh, he's, you know, one of the most productive backs in the NFL in the last four or five weeks. And now, you know, he's back from the injury producing. I think that's the strength of this Bill's uh, new look offensive line that was completely rebuilt in the offseason is in run blocking. And sometimes it breaks down, you know, rookie Cody Ford on the right side at times has struggled in pass protection. Uh, Deion Dawkins as well, uh, even though he's having a really good year. I think they're all excelling in the run game. And that's an area that Brian Dable, uh, Bobby Johnson really like to kind of fortify uh, the offense and, and get physical and, and set the tone. And they have to do that this, this week. Frank Gore, had success, went over 100 yards against the Patriots in week four, and I think that's going to be a major key in this game. 
Yeah, um, and if there's one Achilles heel to this Patriots defense, it's been very good. It's the run game. Um, even last week in Cincinnati, Joe Mixon picked up 130 on them. Um, and if you look at the games they've lost, I mean, obviously Baltimore runs on everybody, but they ran all over them. Um, Houston ran on them well. Even in some of the wins, like the Browns ran on them. So that is it, like if there's an Achilles heel to this defense, it's that. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So finally, I'd like to ask this, um, you know, uh, get a kind of pulse of the fan base. I mean, you're interacting with them all on social media all the time. Is there any, obviously, you know, we talked about Tom Brady, but what, what's the concern level within, you know, Patriots nation, which is a pretty pessimistic group to begin with uh, at just being familiar as a New Yorker yeah. growing up a New York Yankees fan, um, you know, potentially losing the division, but also potentially at some point this dynasty may be uh, running its course. It's funny. They're divided very firmly into two camps where it's still, oh, you know, in, in Tom we trust, in, in Bill we trust, Tom's, Tommy's going to come and light it up like it's going to happen. And then there's like a very, very pessimistic side that's like, this is the end, they've lost, you know, what a three of four, three of five, uh, you know, or maybe it's three, what they've lost three games late in the season. They don't do that, right? And it's like, oh, they're not doing this well. They're not doing that well. Uh, and there's like panic alarms going up. So it's kind of funny. Like <laughs> the mentions on everything are just like slashed in half. <laughs> there's really no middle ground where it's like, you know, the middle ground's probably the reality. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly, it's certainly like a 50 50 split there. That's funny. And I think it's, fu- on the reverse side of that, you know, within the, you know, Bills fan base, it's, I think it's a, a, there's a positivity. There's a level of confidence that I don't think has been there against the Patriots a lot over the last 20 years, but I still think that there is still a deep seated, uh, you know, uh, emotional uh, reaction to playing the Patriots because there's been so much, uh, so many letdowns over the years. So it'll be interesting to see how this, this plays out on Sunday. Huge game uh, for this Bills team that, you know, wouldn't come out and say it in the locker room today that this is like another hurdle or, you know, something that really proves that they're contenders. And, you know, Jordan Phillips said uh, coming off of his Pro Bowl snub sitting at nine and a half sacks from the interior defensive line said, you know, we haven't proved that we're contenders by now. I don't think that that this win would do that anymore. So I would disagree with that. I think that this would would certainly solidify them as a contender, but prediction time, big game, Foxborough, December, Bills have never won uh, against Tom Brady in that stadium uh, in a real game where he played the whole thing. What's your prediction? I'm going – seeing is believing. I'm still going to stick with the Patriots here, but I'm thinking – I think this Bills defense is legit. I'm going Patriots 17, Bills 16. I think it's going to be really close. Yeah, I, I think the Patriots win, but I think the Bills cover. And, uh, yeah, I, I think – you know, personally, I'm just excited to have, like – a engaging competitive like late season game in December usually the Patriots have the division wrapped up by now and it's like maybe we'll see the backup quarterback and that's <laughs> something to write about but like this game should be awesome for sure for sure what do you got yeah I think um you know I I usually wait till later in the week uh to make this pick but I I think I agree with your line of thinking it's just something that you know it's a tall order coming off of the emotional game on Sunday night football where the Bills haven't played since 2007 and then turn around on six days notice go into Foxborough against Bill Belichick and win I think it's going to be an ultra competitive game and I do think that there I see plenty of paths to victory for the Bills but I do think that the Patriots are going to wind up winning um you know Josh Allen taking care of the football is going to be a big part of that if they can to stay close and I think he'll do it for the most part uh but I could see the the deep the Patriots defense scoring in this one being maybe uh 21 to 20 17 victory for the Patriots. It's going to be a good game, though, I think. I think it's going to be oh, fun. Absolutely. I'd be shocked to see a blowout either way. So let everybody know where they can find your work uh, so they can read uh, from the Patriots side this week. Yeah, so come to MassLive.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at by Chris Mason, And, uh, yeah, all the stuff right on the Mass Live Patriots section. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, checking out your coverage over the – you know, the end of this season, then into, into a, a 2020 that can be a whole new world for the AFC East, which is super fun. Yep. Hey, awesome. Maybe we'll end up uh, doing this again for the playoffs. For sure. For sure. And guys, as always, nyupsyracuse.com. 
make sure you get over there for all your Buffalo Bills content. We'll be in Foxborough this Saturday for a pretty big game, 4.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. Thanks again, Chris. Thanks. Bye.